Let's say I have half a pizza, and I want to know what is half of a half. Well, we just slice it right there, and we okay, we take that off and have it for lunch. Half of a half is looks like a quarter. Hmm. Now I like to find out what is a third of a third. So here's a third of a pizza. I'll cut this in three parts right here. And so we're going to grab this. So that's just that's one of the third. That's another. There's a third right here. So what is one of these slices? Well, it turns out one third of a third is one ninth. Hmm. Now I like to find out what is two thirds of a quarter right here. So if I, when I slice it like that, and notice if, if you kind of like extend the slices throughout this whole pizza here, you're really cutting it into twelfths. And two thirds of this quarter, see that right there, is really two twelfths, which is of course one sixth. Hmm. Now let's replace the word of that we said previously with the time sign. So now we have a half times a half is a quarter. And that's what happens. I'm just multiplying through the numerators. Yeah, I get that. Multiply through the denominators. Yep, that's right. And let's do the same thing for the others. A third times a third is a ninth. And two thirds times a quarter. Yep, I get two twelfths, which is a sixth. So it looks like if you just multiply straight through your numerators, you get the answer. You just multiply straight through your denominators, you get the answer. Let's make a rule out of this. To multiply proper or improper fractions, multiply the numerators together to get the new numerator. Multiply the denominators together to get the new denominator. Reduce the new fraction to lowest terms if possible. For this example, I want to multiply these two fractions together. So all we really need to do is just multiply the numerators together and you're going to get 24. Multiply our denominators together, you're going to get 36. Well, hey, I can reduce that, and it becomes 2 thirds. Now, there's actually a slicker way of doing this. So let's try that next. Now, another thing we can do is actually cancel out common factors. So you have an 8 and a 4 here. Well, there's a 4 in each. So I have 1, and I'm going to have 2 up there. Here's 3s and 9. We have 3s in common. So I can zap out 3s. I have 1 and 3. So now I just multiply the red numbers together. 1 times 2 is 2, 1 times 3 is 3, and there's our answer. Notice how much easier that was to do. So now we have an improved version of multiplication. To multiply proper or improper fractions, improved version, cancel any common factors by cross-canceling. Multiply the numerators. Multiply the denominators. Simplify if possible. Now that last step isn't really needed if you actually did cancel out all common factors. But sometimes you might forget a common factor. So when you're done with your fraction, take a second look at it and go, hmm, is there something I can maybe cancel out of this thing? Oh yeah, maybe it's something else. So always try to simplify if you can. Now I like to evaluate this expression right here. Well, you, you can multiply straight through, but you're going to get some pretty nasty numbers, and then you need to simplify that. Ugh. So it's much easier to see if you can cross-cancel stuff. Well, right here, the 6 and the 2, they have 2's in common. Oh, the 3 and the 9, I can zap things out there. And there's 5's right here. So I'm left with 11 and 7. No, oh, hey, right here, 7 and 7. So we're left with 1 times 11 times 1 is just 11. 1 times 3 times 1 is 3. See how easy that was? Evaluate the following expression. 6 35ths times 55 ninths times 7 halves. Our first step is to clear. Now let's input our three fractions. Parentheses, 6 divided by 35, close parentheses, open parentheses again, 
55 divide by 9, close parentheses, open parentheses again, 7 divide by 2, and close parentheses. Let's press enter, and now let's make this a fraction. Math, enter, enter again. So our answer is 11 thirds. If you want to multiply a whole number times a fraction, all you really have to do is put the whole number over 1, then just multiply everything together. To multiply mixed numbers, convert them to improper fractions first, then proceed as before. Change the result back into a mixed number. Now I like to multiply these two mixed numbers. So what's your first step? Change them to improper fractions. So to do that, you're going to multiply that together, and then add and multiply these together, and add. So we end up getting 12 fifths for this guy, and over here you're just going to get 40 ninths. Now let's do our little cancellation technique. Uh, there's uh, fives here, and fives there. So you get 8 and 1. Here you're going to have 3's in common. So you can get that. So now let's multiply those together. And you're going to get 32 over 3. And always change your improper fraction to a mixed number. So using long division, you're going to get 10 and 2 thirds. Now I'd like to do the problem we just did on the calculator. What do we do? Well, the first thing you have to do is make sure you enclose your mixed numbers in a set of parentheses. And of course, put a plus sign between the whole part and the fractional part. Now it's ready to put into the calculator. Multiply 2 and 2 fifths times 4 and 4 ninths. Press clear, open parentheses, 2 plus 2 divided by 5, close parentheses, open them again, 4 plus 4 divided by 9, close parentheses, enter. So let's just write down the 10, equals 10. Subtract 10. And now let's make this a fraction. Now let's just tack on the two thirds. Two thirds. And we're done. For exercise 34, I'd like to multiply the following fractions together. Well, for the first one, it doesn't look like anything can be zapped out here. So just multiply them straight across. You're going to get 6 over 35. Now over here, what's happening? Well, there's 3's I can knock off there. So I'm left with 3 and 5 up here, and here there's 8's in both. And I just multiply that straight through. So you're going to get 5, 6. Let's do some others. Now I want you to multiply these together. Well, the first step is to put our whole number over 1, and we need to change our improper fractions. So here I'm going to get 3 over 1 times, and 2 goes below, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Here the 5 stays below, 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Now can we zap things out of here? Well, the 5's cancel nicely. And the 2 and the 6 can be zapped out, and that looks like that's it. So I'm left with just 9 over 1, which just becomes 9. Finally, try multiplying these three numbers together. Well, the first step is to put the 4 over 1, right? And let's change our mixed number. So what do we get? We get 4 over 1 
times, that just stays the same. And over here, I'm going to get 10 ninths. Okay, let's zap some stuff here. Hmm. Oh, the 4 and the 8. And what? Oh, the 2 and the 10. Things can go away. 3s are common here. So I'm left with this. And now, now let's just multiply straight through. And you get 5 over 3. And we're done.